And now another History Bite from VoicesofOklahoma.com. The month of February is designated as Black History Month. It is a time to recognize the role of blacks in U.S. history and to celebrate their achievements. The contributions of blacks in Oklahoma are significant. On Tuesday afternoon, August 19, 1958, Clara Looper, a major leader in the fight to end segregation, along with 13 youngsters, which included her son and daughter, entered the segregated Katz drugstore in downtown Oklahoma City and asked to be served 13 Cokes. Clara Looper's daughter Marilyn was eight years old at the time, and from her oral history interview, she tells us what happened that day. We just went in and sat down and told them that we wanted to get a Coke and a hamburger. They said they don't serve niggas. And your mother was talking to them, probably. Clara was talking to them. I didn't hear her, but knowing her, they were as determined not to serve us as she was determined that we were going to be served. Do you recall being fearful? <laughs> and you knew you were just going to sit there? Mm-hmm. I keep my mouth closed. I had a chimpanzee thrown on me. You had a chimpanzee thrown on you? Mm-hmm. He threw it right on me. As we used to say, if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. Because during the city movement, as it progressed, and the bitterness progressed, people spitting on you, dropping coffee, kicking you, whatever. You learned that we were part of this army of nonviolence, no matter what. And the people that could not remain nonviolent, they were asked not to come back. We could not afford to let them ruin the mission. We wanted to be able to go in and sit down, drink their coat, and eat their hamburger. Clara Looper's daughter, Marilyn Looper, and her recollection of that day. Joyce Henderson, an Oklahoma City educator, was a high school student at the time of the sit-in, and she talks about the lead-up to the sit-in, when blacks could order food to go, but could not sit down. Could not sit down, or you could go in many restaurants, get your food, eat in the back. And when I say the back, I mean outdoors. You could not eat in the facility. And that's the sad part. You could buy anything you needed in their store. But when it came time to eat, you could not eat in the store. Not only that, you couldn't go to the bathroom unless you were going to a separate bathroom. You think back and say, how much money did you spend to keep us separated? Not only did you have restrooms for blacks, you had to divide those restrooms male, female. So you just went through a lot of (laughs) <laughs> trouble to separate us. For the Oklahoma City Cats drugstore sit-in, 13 children were chosen, and there was a reason they preferred children over adults. Joyce Henderson explains. What was unique about the sit-in, they preferred to use children instead of adults, because if it happened to adults, they probably wouldn't just say, oh, I'm going to take this they would probably be ready to retaliate quickly. So using young people worked out to the advantage of the city and movement time. We must also remember the idea came from children. That's correct. And it came from a youth council, so it grew out of that. That's right. It kind of made sense then to also use children. Use children. The seed was planted because of children saying, let's do this. We found out that we were the first nonviolent on the books in the United States. And they have that now as a record because at first we thought it was Greenboro's, North Carolina. And history showed that it started in Oklahoma City. So as we observe Black History Month, we applaud Clara Looper and those 13 black children who made a difference in Oklahoma. For three days later... Katz management desegregated its lunch counters in three states. By visiting the oral history website, VoicesOfOklahoma.com, and the section on racism, you will hear more stories of great black accomplishments as we observe Black History Month. This has been another History Bite provided by VoicesOfOklahoma.com.